and if possible you can actually open up the shampoo and take a look inside try to choose a shampoo that is a little bit hi everybody welcome to minglish let's get beauty your hair is the most beautiful and the most important accessory in fact it's even more important than your makeup so spend five minutes now find out how to have a good hair day Do you have hair loss problem? We usually think this is a problem that happens to men who's going through a midlife crisis, but it can really happen to anyone, especially the young people. It could be the diet or maybe stress, but what's the connection? This is why we are having Dr. Liu here today. He's here to piece this puzzle together for us. Let's welcome Dr. Liu. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Liu from Moduling Hair Clinic. I specialize in hair transplant and hair loss. How can diet have such a strong influence on our hair growth? Have you been seeing younger patients recently? Well, that's true. I'm seeing quite a lot of younger patients with hair loss recently. It's not just only the diet. It could be the gene or it could be the stress. But diet has become a main role in the hair loss currently. Well, everyone's under some kind of pressure these days. And not to mention, everyone has a sweet tooth. I think we need to find out more about this issue. Let's go to the conversation. Today's conversation. Hi, Dr. Liu. How was the conference in Panama? Wow, you look energetic and refreshed. Well, it went well. I spoke with many doctors and we talked about the latest hair transplant technology. And also there are some new insights in the hair loss industry. By the way, Jenny, your hair look a little bit floppy, you know. What happened? Oh, no, it's actually not just my hair. Uh -huh. uh, last time Annabella saw me, she said I've been picking up weight. I don't know what's happening. Help me. Are you under a lot of stress recently? Uh, a little bit, but I've been eating a lot of sweet food. Ah, uh, that could be a problem. This sweet food is considered carbohydrates. But excessive carbohydrate is not good for your health. It not only gain weight, it also alters your hormonal status and your hormonal status can lead to hair loss. Cutting it down would be a good idea. Thank you, Dr. Liu. You know, I never knew I was exposed to this crisis and for the sake of my hair, I better take your advice. Drop by my colleague sometime. Let me take a look at your hair under the microscope. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Oh yeah, do you know I could actually drop by that donut shop by your clinic? Jenny, have you just forgotten what I've just said? Oops. Today's topic. Dr. Liu, can you explain more about how sweet food actually affect our hair growth? Well, this is a little bit complicated, but let's put it in a simpler way. When you have excessive sweet food, which is carbohydrate, your insulin level goes up. So when your insulin level is going up all the time, it affects your hormonal level. So when your hormonal level is affected, it not only affects your body, you get uh, angry easily, also you can have hair loss easily. Dr. Liu, you just mentioned a male hormone. Do you mean androgenic hair loss? Can this happen to females too? Yes, this is true. Androgenic alopecia is not only for men. The age-wise, uh, it happens between 45 to 55 for females. So androgeny alopecia is not solely for men, it also happens to women. So you have to be really careful about it. Dr. Liu, can you tell us more about other causes of hair loss, especially among the young people? Well, we can categorize hair loss into three categories. One is disease related, such as anemia, hypothyroidism, but this you have to go to a doctor to be confirmed of. The second one is androgeny alopecia. It happens mostly in men, also in women, don't forget. And the third one is the most common causes of hair loss. We can categorize this into the hair loss that does come back. This hair loss will come back in three to six months. We call this the telogen effluvium. Most commonly, uh, we can see in first postpartum hair loss. This is really common. It almost happens to every woman after they gave birth. And the second one is uh, inappropriate diet control. 
Most women now want to have a slim look, so they go into very severe dietary control or excessive food like Jenny just said, you know, sugar, carbohydrates, which is not good. It also contributes to hair loss. And the third one is stress. Stress do contributes to hair loss. Stress alters your hormonal level and your hormonal status. But we all name this under telogen effluvium. With treatment, those hairs can come back. Oh, Dr. Liu, well, you just mentioned treatments and solutions. Can you give us a bit more details about these? Before I go into treatment, let's talk a little bit about what you can do yourself instead of going to a doctor. We call this lifestyle modification. The first thing you should do is to take out the stress. Try to do exercises and listen to the music. It helps with your hormonal status. And the next thing is with the food. Try to eat healthy. To eat a lot of vegetables, green vegetables especially. If possible, you can also eat some nuts. Nuts are considered good oil, which is good for your health and for your hair also. So this is what you can do regularly at home. And also don't forget, try to sleep early. It's always good to turn into bed like before 11. Dr. Liu, so how can I take better care of my hair or my hair roots in general? Does the shampoo really matter? Well, shampoo is something we use to clean off our hair. You have to choose your shampoo wisely. First, you have to see how your scalp condition is. Is your scalp oily, normal, or too dry? Every time you go back at night, your hair becomes oily. It means that you have an oily scalp. And if you go out for you know, a vacation and you didn't shampoo for three to four days and your scalp is dry, it's not as oily, your scalp is considered dry. Scalp is oily, you have to try to choose a shampoo that cleans the oil better. But only for dry skin, you have to choose a milder, gentle shampoo. As for the scent, I would suggest try to choose a scent that is not very strong. It should be mild, something you like. And if possible, you can actually open up the shampoo and take a look inside. Try to choose a shampoo that is a little bit light brownish. That's the best shampoo that you can choose. Because there are some shampoo that is coloring like white. They are all additive. So try to cut down the additives that's included in the shampoo. Now let's get into something more important. When you shampoo, try not to use too extreme hot water. Hot water cleans off your scalp easier, but excessive cleaning is not good for your scalp. We still need a little bit of oil on the scalp for our health. Try to have the water temperature between like 35 to 38. Excessive cleaning is not good for your scalp and for your face also. So the next, when you still have problem with increase of hair loss, you should go to a doctor. So from my point of view, when we see patients with hair loss, the most common one, like I just said, telogen effluvium, the hair that grows back, we start with medications. It could be topical, we put on top of the hair, or it could be oral. Normally, we start with topical first. And if it doesn't work as well, then we we'll go ahead with the oral medication. So sometimes uh, there are more invasive procedures that we can do for you know, hair loss. Those invasive procedures include like, you know, needling, injecting serums, using autologous blood, tissues, take from yourself and you can inject it back into the scalp. It helps with the growth. So this is the more invasive part. And the next thing, this is genetic androgenic alopecia, which means that the hair doesn't grow back and we have to actually go into a hair transplant. And that's my specialty. Wow, thank you, Dr. Liu. I never knew there were so much details to your bottle of shampoo and also the treatments and medications. I never knew there were so many choices. Thanks for sharing this information with us, especially uh, some of my friends are having hair loss problems. I should let them know about this. Thanks for coming today. It's my pleasure. And good to see you again, Jenny. Thank you, Dr. Liu. See you next time. Bye-bye. Today's keywords. Let's review a few terms that we have just said. Hair transplant surgery. Hair transplant surgery. Male pattern bonus. Male pattern bonus. Alopecia areata. Alopecia areata. Dendruff. Dendruff. Hair follicle. Hair follicle. Hairline. Hairline. 
We don't speak. We don't speak. Today's idiom. Let your hair down. It's been a long day. Let your hair down. It's really wonderful having Dr. Liu with us today. Finally, we know that hair loss isn't just one issue on its own. And also, read the labels on your shampoo. Only use the medicated one under the doctor's instruction. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. After you've been back from the conference in Panama. I will continue to talk. If you like our video, please subscribe our channel.